is happening y'all welcome back this is another exciting episode of creators in creation where we spend time talking with different creators in media because creators are cool i am your host lord cuss a lot travis pointer aka the dragon king aka big t aka t money aka sweet t aka black merlin aka the hnic and I'm joined today by some very special guests today from Cypher Block Studios, the home studio of the new hit, soon to be hit video game, Soul Seeker. First of all, the lead designer, Mr. Ked Denson. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing just great, great, great. And the CEO of Cypher Block Studios, Mr. Chris Walker. How are you today, sir? Doing great. Great to be here. Glad to have you both exciting times so let's just get right into it tell me you know what is cypher block studios who are y'all and what's so exciting about what you're doing so cypher block studios is a small indie dev game dev company and obviously our first game is going to be soul seeker we've been working on it for about two years mm -hmm. so we're looking forward to creating final fantasy s games so fantasy genre but we're hoping to add a bit more horror into it okay okay and nice, we have nice. a very unique combat system that includes like deities from ancient africa and more relating to black history than most games we see nowadays that's, that's pretty much okay okay so you were talking about um you know the combat system and everything i would i would assume the, the lead designer can tell me a bit more about that so um tell me about this uh this, this uh, battle system you're developing here so we're basically developing an action rpg so instead of the original final fantasy like games it was mostly turn based and then it went into action mm -hmm. combat we basically starting off with just action based combat something similar to like god of war Gotcha. Where we including these magical elements more towards the Final Fantasy job. Gotcha. So you hear, you know, basic melee weapon changes with the, uh, we developing this magical system called the Conjure System, where mm -hmm. you can basically use magic while you're fighting with the weapons in one hand, but then the other hand. So that's basically the, you know, our concept as far as the combat system. It's probably a little bit different than other games. Yeah. They usually either have, you either do one thing or you do the other, or we basically mix them two into one so it can simultaneously be done as you're playing the game. Got you. So you say the weapon in one hand, the weapons, are there special weapons or is it just your your main kind of weapon you stick with through the whole game? What do you, what do you kind of have going on there with the weapons? So we have um, two parts. One is the story mode and then the online mode. Okay. So the story mode is going to be set weapons per character, just like Final Fantasy. So you have multiple characters. Okay, good, good. Yeah, good, good, good. we have multiple characters. Uh, we have a set of six main characters that will be played through throughout the story mode. Mm -hmm. And so the, each one of those characters have their own weapons. We have the long sword. We have the boxing hands. We have the dual blades. We also have like an archery system. And then we have a sniper too. Okay. So you said six main characters. Is this like a party of characters? Is it one of the kind of things we switch between two of the story, between the six as the story goes along? It's a party character. So it's, okay. it's, it's going to be a co-op couch. So you'll be able to play with your friends at the house, split screen, and they'll be able to jump in the game anytime when it's another character in your party at the time. I'm down for couch co-op. I like that. We yeah, don't get we're going to bring you back. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, well, I mean, you said you're six characters. Why don't y'all tell me about the characters in the game? Like, who, who are these people? Why do we, you know, why are we joining them on this adventure? Okay, yeah, so we got our main characters. We starting off in forever. So this is Zian, Zian mm -hmm. Strider. He's one of the main characters of the game. He's going to be your, basically your protagonist. He's a um, young black kid orphaned after the wars that basically destroyed the world before. Okay. So he's gonna come up into uh, something like a military orphanage where they take in kids, but they also train them to be mercenaries. So you're gonna start off the game within basically coming out the classroom and taking your test so you can become a knight. So the knight system is basically the mercenaries, once these kids get you know strong enough and old enough, 
they can take these tests to become knights, and then once they become knights, they can go on missions and basically fight as mercenaries. They're hired to help people or, you know, whatever job comes, with, you know, and, and play at the time. Got it. Okay. And so this is Sahara. She's the other protagonist in the game. She was not orphaned. Um, she did lose her mother, but her father is a leader and another type of mercenary group, another division of the Knights. And basically she is more of a rebel. Okay. She's very- so she, She's not actually a Knight then, she's just- No, okay. she's, she's gonna be the one that's gonna hire the Knights for a mission, that's gonna really get them all in trouble, but- Got that's part it. Of the story. <laughs> okay, don't, yeah. don't spoil it for me then. Okay, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. I wanna so, play it myself yeah, when a, it come out. She's a really energetic character, hyper, hyperactive, fun, and likes to have fun, but also serious because she's actually the leader mm -hmm. of the actual rebellion that she's leading right now. Got it, okay, okay. And then here you go, Zaire. This is basically Zion's rival, but also a playable character in the game. He's more of a combat-based character that's really into fighting and Gotcha. Really don't take no, you know, no type of BS with people at the time. Like, so you don't like play the Vegeta around. to his Goku. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. You go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. He also uses a long sword, just like um, Zion. Got it. So here's uh, Amani. She's an um, instructor at the divisions. She's basically she's 21, so she's older, but she's also really, really well trained. So she actually became a young instructor to teach the other kids you know, how to become knights and in class and battling these enemies as they go out into the world. I hear my boy, right well, here, Ra. Now this one, he, he box. <laughs> he box. He look like he got hands, yeah. Yeah, he got hands. <laughs> <laughs> he an energetic character. He um, really a ladies man. Throughout the game, you will see, he trying to, you know, pick up the ladies, everybody he meet. And really fun. Um, he's a dancer. You know, we're gonna have a couple of things coming back to Chicago. I got food working in the game. Like we going crazy. Nice. Like, like just keeping it, you know, with our culture. Like oh, a yeah. Of, oh yeah. A lot of culture elements in there that you don't see in these games or anything like Definitely. that that represent us. Yeah. So you both from Chicago? Yeah. Yes. Nice, nice. I knew I liked y'all for a reason. <laughs> All right, this Ify. She's also another um student at the um division with other characters. She's a archery. She's more of a quiet type, um, but very knowledgeable and intelligent, kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of country bumpkin type character. Mm -hmm. You know, the Georgia Peach right there. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And then we got right here, Amir, Amari. They gonna, people gonna probably say his name all type of ways, but <laughs> he's, How a, do you he's say a sniper. It? You see him later on in the game. He's a sniper, also part of the division, one of the knights. Okay. He's a um, really fun guy, likes to eat food, you know, just like the hang guy. I'll type this up. And those are your main characters that you're going to be able to play through throughout the story game. Okay. So um, typically with these types of games, you know, you, you have your party and each one of the party actually, like, you know, plays a specific role. Is that how this is going to work too? Like, where they, like, have one that's more like your distant fighter, one that's more like your, your your tank that takes a lot of damage, or you have something different. No, we kind of, I kind of want to veer off from roles. <laughs> so each character will be able to be the tank, or they can be the healer. It's it's pretty much going to be up to the player. You specialize how you, how you want, want to. to okay, yeah, got how it. you want your character to be. It's not going to be set roles. Even though I have set weapons, but the magic, the magical system is what balances out the weapon usage and stuff okay. like that. So, so you kind of choose what you want each character to be. Right. And what they okay, that makes sense. I like that. Okay, so how about y'all tell me more about Cipher Block Studios? How did you all get started? Where where did this idea come from? Okay, so basically it came from me. Um, this time my first game company. I had another company called Nigeria Visions about seven years ago. We were developing mobile apps for kids. Um, we had a game called Kid Kimmit, the unknown hero, something similar to like a Mario game, but with more action into it and mm -hmm. black characters. So we did This was that. called what now? It was called Kid Kimmy, the Unknown Hero. Okay. Kid Kimmy. Yeah, so you played as a kid named Kimmy. Um, his, basically his girl got taken away by the evil um, deity. Um, we used Ifrit from the Greek gods 
as the, the as the evil deity. Mm -hmm. And so you go on to fight him and defeat him and get your girl back. So that was our first mobile app game that we created. Um, we, lasted, we was out for about four years. It did uh, it did decent. Um, it really opened up the doors. I made we really made more revenue developing more games for other people after they seen what we can do than actually on the game. Yeah, and so you we, got but you got people's attention so they could uh, you know bring you right. on. Do, yeah, makes sense. So that was a good that was a good run. And then so we basically came on to the Cyberblock Studios because I was writing another story and got up with Chris and was like, hey man, let's, you know, let's do this again. And now we wrote the story, created the artwork, started developing the game. And then Cyberblock Studios is just gonna be the, basically the company. So if we wanted to do other stuff like I did with the other company, Cyberblock Studios is gonna be the main company. You will be able to hire them to develop your games, your right. apps, or any type of, you know, coding as far as software development. And then Soul Secret of Game is up under Cypherblock Studios, so they have rights all go to Cypherblock Studios. Great. That is actually very good to know. I'm going to write that down. Um, Chris, he said he brought you in to do this. Did it take much convincing to get you on board, or were you just like, as soon as he said it all, oh, yeah, let's go. Hell yeah. As soon as he said it, pretty much, I was ready to go. <laughs> We've both been into gaming our entire lives. So. Mm -hmm this was like a dream come true i've been studying how to program in like c python java all mm -hmm. of that so to be able to help put into actual practice was, was perfect sounds awesome okay okay um so you said you both have been in the games for quite some time what what would you say like you know is what pulled you into video games in the first place i would say my father okay. my father um my father and my mother, they were the ones to introduce me into the video games. My mother used to work at um, Toys R Us back when they was in business. She was a manager, mm. store manager there. So we used to get, we used to have access to them consoles when they first came out. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't miss, we didn't miss a I, beat. I definitely remember going to Toys R Us as a kid to play them. Like when the, when the N64 first came out, I specifically remember that one, going to Toys R Us to play Mario on the N64. My mother, because it just happened to be next to a Burlington Coat Factory. My mother was going to burn the coat back. I'm like, yeah, that's I'm the one. Go. I'm gonna go in here. The one, yeah, you from you know what I'm talking about. The one over in Lansing. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Right on <laughs> <laughs> the one in Lansing. I just I forgot. Like, yeah, y'all from Chicago. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, yeah, I go to that Toys R Us right there. I'm like, yep, I'm gonna play Mario while you go and find great coats. That's what, yeah, okay. But um, yeah, yeah, um. Now I just want to talk to y'all about Chicago. I miss it so much. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> okay, okay. Uh, what about you, Chris? What, what what got you into video games? For me, I loved. I don't know. That's a very di <laughs> difficult question because I started at such an early age. I just love being able for this random set of inputs to actually have a meaningful change on like a visual representation. Gotcha. And that's also what got me into coding and programming. I'd like to say that makes sense, exp you know, considering what you told me before about wanting to be able to do programming and coding and all that. Like, oh, you see, cause and effect is what drew you into it. Like, oh, I can do this, and that makes this happen over here. How does that work? And so you start, I got you. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I understand. I get it. Um. Good, good. So... You mentioned some uh, deities that were um, existing in this world. Like, who are they? Like, what do you, what do you, what's the, what's, which ones, I guess, are you, are the ones you want to really want people to see and know about? Okay, so we definitely have Oleron in the game. The African god of gravity and soul, basically, is what his role is in the game. Okay. We took a lot of, um, so Oleron is a main one, a major one. We have, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if people know too many about Nikki Naka, um, but Nikki Naka is a um, deity that was shaped like a dragon, but arms of a gorilla. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a version of Nikki Naka. He's gonna be one of the most powerful deities in the game, a large entity that's gonna be inside of the world of Koritoa. We have um, Mawu, that's the one that was on the shirt and the hoodies that we had. Um, So we okay. gave them an element 
to um, hold similar to, you know, some of the history that I've researched as far as like the African history of deities and within, you know, Africa. We, it's a total of about 10. And we also threw in an extra um, secret one that you can't really say too much about right now. Okay. <laughs> well, don't tell me then. Don't tell me. I told you. I want to experience it myself. So, yeah. yeah so it's going to be, uh, like I said, it's, um, it's 10 deities. Um, each one of them are going to be inside of the world and hidden places. It's not going to be something that's mandatory to use or find, but it will be helpful. But they're there. Okay. Yeah, so they're there. I see. I see. Okay. And so, each one of them have a backstory that you will learn in the lore of the game, um, where they came from, the trials they went to before, and how they became what they are. And it's, we, it's pretty detailed as far as like the lore in the game that we created within this universe. We basically created a universe similar to that of like a Star Wars, an Avatar, or something like that. We have animals, we have pets, we have the enemies, we have monsters, we have the world, the planet. We got other planets, it's all type of things just all encumbered into one that it can really immerse, you know, everybody into into the actual story. Okay, okay. So you said you have um, two modes in the game. You said there is a story mode and the online mode, is that what you said? Correct. Okay, so tell me about more, more about the online mode, because I know a lot of people care about that. Yeah, so yeah, so we do an online mode in there. Um, basically, after you, we're going to make it mandatory to complete the story so you can get really immersed into the, into the game. And then after you create Makes that, I mean, after you finish that, you will be able to play the online mode where you create your own character and you rise in the ranks of the knights or you can rise in the ranks of the opposition, which is the Doors army. So you'll be able to choose between the two factions that's really, you know, going at each other and, you know, level up and do missions and, you know, play with your friends as you're doing, doing that. That's what's up. So, you mentioned the character creator. I'm always down for a good character creator. I'm wondering, because I'm wondering if it's the same reason for me, as for you as it is for me, what drew you to having a character creator? Have you always liked having character creators in games? And why? If so, so. I, I'll go first. And Chris, you got you to got, finish it. But for me, growing up into video games, it was always never any black characters. No black hair. And if I wanted to make my motherfucking character black, I had to go take that hue thing all the way down. All the way to the bottom. It still didn't quite look right. <laughs> yeah, it didn't look right. We, even the facial features was not there. Yeah. It was never, yeah. it was never there. I mean, they, they're getting better now that people have been complaining and they oh, see yeah. that the, the black, you know, movement as far as it comes to creativity and gang is going, going really fast. So they're trying to encapsulate that, but they still, they still not, they still not not there and they're not gonna be able to get there because they actually need i mean they steal the culture all the time but it's not that that percentage yeah that percentage of you know black representation within the game industry is very low I would very low. how about you chris oh i think we lost chris <laughs> we'll see we'll hopefully get him back soon but um i'll uh follow up with you on that though um as far as the online mode goes you say you create your character there's missions for you to go on you said there's two factions who are the two factions so you have the knights which is basically the mercenaries they are hired to do missions to protect people and you know go out and then you have doris army which is basically they're trying to take over the planet and become like the one world leader okay so you would be able to play with in either one of those. You can rise in the ranks of Thor's army or more on the like the side of, you know, the evil side. They don't really play around. Um, they take a town. You can go into town, take over a town, and hold, you know, hold it, hold it up, and make them collect from the pe town's people and all of that type of stuff. Or you immerse in that, then you got to go, you know, help the town from the Thor's army and also from the monsters that's in the area surrounding the town. Okay, okay, okay. I think we got him back now. There we go. <laughs> apologize for that. I think my internet went out for a second. Oh, okay. Well, we got you back now. That's what matters. <laughs> uh, but I was going to ask you about uh, character creators. How do you... What, what what draws you to character creators if you're drawn to that? I'm not going to assume. Oh, I am. I've spent countless hours creating 
characters and Dark Souls just trying to get the goofiest combinations I can possible. <laughs> sometimes I mean, like Shrek, <laughs> sometimes I try and make famous actors, whatever it may be. There's always one thing that they never got right though. That was black actors and black hair, black mm -hmm. anything pretty much. They have no diversity. It's all just filled in like pre-generated white textures yeah. for the most part, even down to its movement. Gotcha. I'm sure Ken may have addressed that a little bit as well. He did, yeah. Yeah. If you could address that a little bit, it would be come true to see. Oh, yeah. Putting, to put me actually into it. <laughs> it's kind of, um, but it actually ties in what I was going to ask you all about, too. Like, you know, you mentioned world building, because that's big for me, too. Um, I play a lot of uh, tabletop RPGs, mostly D&D. &D. And... The reason what drew me into it was the creativity and the you know the world building aspect of it and that's what i love to do um so when it comes to your world building what were your priorities when you started like i want to create this world what's more what was the most important thing to you i would say hmm, that's a good question i mean i probably would say the the entanglement of the environment and story. So okay. um, I wanted to be something relatable to, you know, to us. And also a final, a, a fantasy that a lot of people don't get to explore as far as being outside of their, you know, neighborhoods. Cause mm -hmm. like where I'm from, it's like a lot of people don't get to go outside that part, you know, past them few blocks that they pretty much grew up on most of their lives. And a lot of people actually use fantasy to, you know, escape them worlds. And they can, you know, that's how they pretty much, you know, deal with a lot of stuff. They use these escape escapes. Um, and then that could be, you know, many things from drugs to partying to, you know, alcohol. But it's also a route to, you know, read and go into these fantasy worlds. So I wanted something that can encumber and relate to these people. And the only way they're gonna be able to see it, they gotta go out there and experience it. It's just something different that I just was trying to bring to them. It's not that much different than a lot of people are trying to do right now, but we just trying to get the word out that it's going on. You know? Yeah. Kind of sounds similar to what I'm trying to do with Dungeons and Dragons right now, bringing more black people into it. Cause it's just, you know, tabletop RPGs are fun. And a lot of times, People who grew up, you know, like we did, don't really realize it because it's just not something we're exposed to. It's just one of those where they look at it like something like we don't do that, you know. Right. But it's just like that's because y'all just don't know. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Now it's got a thing. I've got a couple of campaigns going right now. Everybody in the campaign is black. They're all loving it, and it's just I feel really good about it. And you all trying to do the same thing with video games is fantastic to me. I love seeing that. Definitely. Yeah. Do you have any virtual campaigns? I'd definitely be down to join. I love the AD. Okay. Um, well, right now, I've, like I said, I've got two running right now, and that's kind of filling my plate. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I can imagine. I can. Um, I'll send you a link to the uh, to the Facebook group though, because there's you know trying to grow that group up. You know, just getting more and more black people in. And, you know, talking about RPGs and loving you know D and D and all that kind of stuff. And I want to grow that. So yeah, I'll definitely share all that with you. Um. Okay. Is there anything else you want to make sure the world knows about Cypher Block Studios or about Soul Seeker specifically? Well, right now we have the, the comic book. We told the story in the form of a comic book. We have a three part series that's already done. The first one just released in February. Okay. If you want to get more information about the story and what's going on in the, in the world, you can pick up the comic book on our website and we will mail it out to you and, and just you know it's pretty interesting and then three months from now we will release the next version like i said we have three already done and completed mm -hmm. we're just releasing them you know in a time period so people can get a chance to experience it and put the word out because as we're developing the game we also creating more content for people to you know get involved and see what's going on until the game releases got it okay okay um i would also like oh go ahead yeah, no, I just also want to say that uh, if you're into anything gaming, we have a gaming blog on our on our website. We also have a YouTube channel where we release Lo-Fi Beats. We just recently, I think yesterday or two days ago, released like a 
four hour long playlist so yeah please check it out the uh tack on focus chill yes yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. i see it right here. i got your channel up i know <laughs> perfect perfect it's full of vegas i, I promise okay. it's a lot of, it's a lot of drops in there too um to see if people pick up on them it's a lot of um movie references in the lo-fi in the background check them out i'm trying to i'm gonna I'm start tagging them in there and see if people can see pick them up because it's a lot of stuff like even the intro if they can i'm gonna do a little rapper if somebody can guess who's singing at the beginning right after the um anime text i'm mm -hmm. gonna get i'm gonna do a giveaway for them i'm gonna be setting that up soon okay okay i like some good vibes i'm liking that all right so got the other thing I was about to say must not have been that important so um got a few other things I'm gonna ask you these are the kind of stuff I ask everybody on this show um but before I get into like you know these other things I'm gonna ask you the most important question you all have been asked in a very long time all right this, this trumps everything you've ever been asked I'm gonna ask you both what's your favorite dinosaur Brontosaurus Rex. <laughs> okay, okay. Velociraptor. Like the big dude, see? You know what? And his thing is, we're not, you seem like somebody likes a Velociraptor, and I appreciate that because I like <laughs> Velociraptors too. Nice. You go. I can relate to them. The most yeah. small, quick. Yeah, and yeah. the smart ones. You know, it's just the ones that are just like, you know, the way they hunt and everything. Like, yeah, I like them. I got you. All right. Um, what about you? You said Velociraptor as well, Raptor, right? Raptor. Yeah, Velociraptor. That's that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. What is the uh, first creative experience you remember having? Um, I would be. It would be as a kid. I don't know the exact age, but my mother was into drawing, and we were just as kids at the, at the apartment, just drawing. You know, we had, I had um, created comic books, all types of artwork as a kid. I just remember um, like drawing my first picture of part of like of X-Men mm -hmm. or something like that. <laughs> and just, just taking it from them. How about you, Chris? So I, my creative experiences are quite different since I'm not an artist. That's fine. I'd say it was around when I was three or four years old. My mom had this old like rotary dial phone, the way you had to like, you know, pop in, turn. Mm -hmm. And I would always play with it. I don't know why. I was obsessed with it. So I would just like, you know, swing it around by its cord. And one day I broke it. I had no idea what any of the parts were, were doing. Like I just knew the sound it made when it was working and the sound it made when it wasn't. So I spent like an hour before my mom came back it was just my sisters watching me so you know how that is i had free reign <laughs> pretty much and i actually put it back together in like fully functioning <laughs> parts and i was so proud of myself and since then i kind of just fell in love with like disassembling things and, yeah and, yeah and just to see see how they work see how they look inside so, yeah. So, yeah that's cool okay okay um <laughs> What inspires you? I would say my kids. Okay. Just want to give them something to look up to and introduce them into a world where limitless opportunities for them because it is they're the future. Like I get my kids involved in a lot of stuff as far as like their creativity. Have them, have them think like my son. I have my son writing a book right now. Him and his friend, they creating a comic. Uh, I have my son doing coding classes for games right now. And then the rest of the kids, they just love, you know, being creative, just sparking their creativity as far as like just art, clothes, books, just pretty much anything. Computers, they all into gaming. All four of them, they just, you know, they sit and play the games with each other all day. And that's where I get a lot of inspiration from. As far as even with the story that I wrote for Soul Seeker, some of the, a lot of the jokes and stuff came from the kids, just being around them. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Like even in the first first series of the book, you'll see this little Eden family scene with the little kids being irritated and funny at the same time. And I got a lot of that from from them. Sounds like the perfect description of kids, <laughs> annoying at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Chris? I'd say what inspires me most is probably failure. Plenty of experiences to look back upon that I'm not too happy with. And it's not that I regret any of the decisions I made, but it's always good to reminisce on past moments so you can learn and improve upon them. So and it's not just my failures. I look to look to other people. You can always learn from everyone's mistakes. Yeah, see what they did wrong, and see what you can do different, what you can do better. Yeah. Cool. Got you. All right. Okay. Um, what uh mainstream creations out there excites you? Definitely AI. It, as I'm sure you've seen the Chat GVT rage, but artificial intelligence is going to take us places we we can't even fathom yet. And I'm excited for it. I'm a little bit worried about it, as everyone is and probably should be. But I'm excited for it. We've all as seen many jobs as it'll, Yeah, no, no Terminators, hopefully. <laughs> That's the thing. I feel like if there were going to be a Terminator, it would have happened already. I don't think we're living in like the first timeline where we're going to make it and then we'll have to worry about separate timelines. No, we would have seen the effects of it by now. I'm gonna assume you're right because it makes me feel better. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll assume that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Ken? I me? Mean, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say the same thing. I mean, we use we use AI every day at Cyberbot Studios. Oh, really? We, what, do you, yeah. what do you all use it for? Um, content creation, um, for our marketing, mm-hmm. we use it for leads. We use it. I even have it sometimes helping with codes in the game, just, you know, quick quick, you know, thought processing, pushing out ideas, getting ideas coming back. The AI is incredibly, you know, strong right now. And it's only at the beginning stage. It's only within the next 10 years, the actual AI cost of it is going to be so low that it is going to be crazy as far as like what it can do and so what it, everything is going to be involved in. Interesting, okay, okay. I'm not gonna lie. I I doubt it. AI's strength as of now, like even in writing. And after Ken showed me a couple of the websites and apps he used, I was I was blown away. I had to start using it every day. <laughs> I get you. I get it. So, um, what lesser known creations excite you? Stuff that's not in the mainstream that people really don't pay much attention to, but you see that really excites you. This right here. This little hologram. <laughs> hey, what's that? Tell me about that. It's um, it's basically like a hologram projector. So you kind of like, like in the movies, how they have the holograms come project out to you within, you know, yeah. an open space. This is like one of the first markers. I think this came out like six years ago. Um, you basically put the um, the code on a memory card, and then you plug it in there, and the fan spins, the lights generates the hologram. And you can pretty much put whatever on there. Where can I get me one of them? <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> okay. Remember that. Yeah. You'll find me one of them. That's, yeah, they that's... cheap too. Like probably like I think they're probably like twenty five dollars now. Oh shit. Okay, I should have one already. Um what about you, Chris? Uh I'd probably say and it's a little bit on the boring end, I guess. Uh there's some research into these new batteries. And okay. I haven't looked into it too much because there isn't much about it, but it should extend battery life by like 10%, which is an insane amount considering the slow progress we've made on batteries in the last like 20, 30 years. Okay. So even with that tiny improvement, it'll make solar power like 10 times better. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, if you can increase the batteries for, you know, solar power, but yeah, that's, that's a big deal. I didn't even think about it in terms of solar power. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because we need, I assume we're eventually gonna stray away or run out of resources to to just burn away. So we're gonna have to- Well, yeah, there's only so much oil. So, so. 
<laughs> have those sources some more alternative sources. Okay. Um, what puts you in a creative state of mind, especially when you're struggling to create? Um, I think music. Music? Okay. What kind of music works for you? I listen to everything, um, but old school music. Bill Withers. Mostly Bill Withers is my, you know, go to as far as like music, and creativity. What song? Or like No Sunshine? No Sunshine, but um, <laughs> the same, the same love that make you cry. Mm, okay, okay. I don't hear that one often. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's my jam. How, you How about you, Chris? Oh, yeah. No, I, I can attest to uh, his music taste as well. <laughs> Sometimes I just hear him <laughs> banging it. <laughs> around. But for me, I'd probably say nature. So I grew up in Boy Scouts, you know, actually reached Eagle, thankfully. And I never lost my love for just being outside. And it, it seems very odd coming from someone who loves games and <laughs> playing. I was a Boy Scout too, man. Coding. I get it. I mean, I didn't get all the way to Eagle. I got to Star, but that was it. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. That's farther than most people, so. Yeah, I got to, basically what happened was I was in, once I went to high school, I was in the band in high school. I went to Marion Catholic High School. I don't know if y'all heard of their band or anything, but they are like big and there's a whole lot of, there's a lot of, like we're practicing all the time. So just like, I just didn't have time for Boy Scouts anymore. Like all day Saturday, I was at rehearsal. We had rehearsal on Wednesday nights from like six to nine. Then sectional rehearsals twice a week after school too. So it was just, I just didn't have the time. And I tried to play football my freshman year too. So there was just no time for it. So I couldn't finish, but yeah, I was a Boy Scout too. So I understand. I love being outside too. Um, I don't like people outside, but I like being outside. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I was very yeah. careful. I, I love nature. <laughs> I don't, I don't like being in nature with others. Yeah, if I can go outside and chill for a while, and there being like no people around to bother me, I'd be all for it. Sometimes I like just like to go out there and just chill with my switch, and I'm like, "Yep, I'm out here, and I'm still doing what I love to do." <laughs> and there we go. It's different when the sun's just hitting you, just right, or that tiny bit of shade blocking your eyes, but feel the warmth of. <laughs> Yeah, Everything around I get it. Just... All right. Um, what does creativity mean to you? I would say the ability to take your thoughts and put it to, to use, really. No matter what it is, it doesn't have to be drawing or creating games. It can be writing, it can be talking, it can be interacting with people. Because if you come up with creative ways to interact with people to get them, you know, to do more, that inspiration, that's creativity there too. There's so many routes of it that it encapsulates a lot into one, mm -hmm. that one world. Putting yeah. the phone back together, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. That's how about you, Chris? I think there are a few different definitions of creativity. So, like, all of that, if you ask me, am I creative? I'd probably say no, because I'm working off of what I think everyone else's definition of creativity is. I believe most people see creativity as this ingrained <coughs> trait that people, some lucky individuals are born with. Kind of like Ken, you know, he's able to draw these amazing art <laughs> artworks and just produce things straight off, of, straight out of his brain and put it on some paper. I may not be able to do that exact same thing, but I think I'm also creative in my ability to solve problems, relate to different distinct fields to each other, and find some of the similarities between them in order to ascertain what's best moving forward. So, yeah, I, I think there's like an exploratory aspect where you just generate new ideas within a given space after first entering it and a, transform a transformational aspect, which is ignoring like fundamental rules in order to create better solutions. Yeah, there is no spoon. I got you. Yes. I'm with you, I'm with you. All right, all right. Um, what's something you wish you knew at the start of your creative journey 
that you know now? Talk to more people. I still got to tell myself to do that, so I get you. Yeah. Um, the currency of people is so important. It's yeah. not about how much you know you can generate in wealth, but it's how much you can generate in people, because that that currency you know lasts. Them bonds and networks is what the world really runs on. So that would, that would be the main thing I would <laughs> wish I knew starting off. And also, that also is like sales. That's one of the main things of sales is being able to talk to people. Mm -hmm. At a young age, you should always get, you know, that um, training in sales and communicating with people, random people that don't want nothing you, you sell them. But <laughs> just, yeah. to be, just the ability to talk to them and generate that conversation and never yeah. lose them comes. That's one of the main things of sales. So, yeah, and that's one I wish I had earlier too, because I didn't really do that until I had to. Pandemic happened and I started working in um, Medicare sales for Medicare um, Advantage plans specifically and talking to a whole bunch of people that didn't want shit to do with what I was talking about because they've been called by somebody they hadn't planned on being called by. Then they got transferred to like another person and then transferred to me and they're like, yo, I'm tired of this and convincing them that like what I'm going to, what I've got for you is helpful to you and go ahead and get this real quick so I can get paid. But um, no, it was just, I get you, I get you. I had to get out of that though, because it, it felt really predatory, but I get what you mean, the luck learning sales and all that, being able to relate to people and generate that conversation with them and, you know, build that rapport with them. It's important to be able to do. So, yeah, I get yeah. You. How about you, Chris? Honestly, I'd say that's my, that would have been one of my top answers as well, because I'm working on being more social and putting myself out there even just going to the most recent like atlantic comic-con was difficult we were constantly putting ourselves out there and getting shot down but that's it's all part of the game yeah. yeah yeah so for me i'd say effort isn't enough so i've i hate the saying that you can put ten thousand hours into something and instantly just become an expert to me that's that's a blatant lie to me i've walked ten thousand hours with the intention of going straight, but sometimes I still drift left when I walk, right? I'm sure there are plenty of accident prone drivers on the road who have spent countless hours behind the wheel. I played probably that same amount of games. I'm not in any esports competitions, so the list goes on. Mm -hmm. It's more about concerted effort to me. You have to have a plan and goals moving forward and trying to achieve those rather than just go at it hammering. A carpenter is more than just a man who's hammered hours he's hammered he's learned he's taken those past experiences and put them to better his future i like that i like that okay um i forgot to ask you all this earlier you said you've been working on this for like you said two and a half years this yeah, particular years. games yeah you have like an end in sight are you still trying to figure that out say that again you have like an end in sight like a you know a date where you'll be close to being done or you just kind of still figuring out how much uh, we're planning on um, next year. Next year, okay. For the at least the story part, and then probably a little bit longer for the online. For the online, but we're talking um, probably third quarter of next year. Third quarter, twenty twenty four. Okay, I can deal with that. Okay, I like that. All right, so we're gonna get into this last part. We're gonna do a bit of a rapid fire here. Okay, it's a little game. I know, you're pretty sure you're familiar with with this or that. Okay. So you, I'll give you two options. You pick one. I got four rules for this though. All right. First rule is you have to answer. Second rule is you cannot say both. Third rule, you cannot say neither. And the fourth rule, no elaborating, no explaining. You just give your answer. We move on. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, I got plenty of them here, but it's gonna be random. So let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna go through 10 of them. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. All right. Coffee or tea? Tea, coffee. Apathy or obsession? Apathy. Apathy. Night or morning? Night. Morning. Fruits or vegetables? 
vegetables. vegetables. Guacamole or salsa? Salsa. Guacamole. Batman or Superman? Batman. Batman. Concert or sporting event? Sporting event. Speeding ticket or parking ticket? Speeding. Speeding ticket. Be embarrassed or be afraid? Being embarrassed. Embarrassed. Group work or solo work? Solo work. Group now. <laughs> that was number 10. Good job, y'all. Good job, y'all. That was fun. That was fun. But if you have nothing else that you want to throw out there, I think that'll be it for today. Got anything right, else right. you want to tell the people? Uh, just check us out, soccerblockstudios.com. Um, that has all our information, contact information. Um, check out our Instagram at Soul Seeker Game. Hit our block tree. We have a lot of links in there, information. Um, we are offering all types of content. And also, if you have something as far as like that want to help out, we also have a job form on there that you can fill out, send us information, we'll contact you, see if you can be, you know, be part of the team. We're always looking for help right now. Like I said, we want to grow network-wise and also, you know, brand-wise. Gotcha. And the only way we can do that is by reaching out to as many people as we can. I feel you. They can find all this stuff at cypherblockstudios.com, right? Yep. Yes. Right here, little tickets also, we'll the bottom, be, y'all. also, we'll be starting a Kickstarter soon, so... Please good, check that good. out as well. Okay, okay. Once you do, let me know. I'll, I'll do what I can to put the word out for y'all too. Because okay. I like what you all are doing and I'm 100% down to help y'all if I can. Ooh. Cool. Great. Cool. All right, folks. Great. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Creators in Creatia, where we spend time with different creators in media because creators are cool. Uh, don't forget to follow Creation World on both Twitter and Instagram. Also on TikTok now, I guess. I didn't know they were doing that until they did it. But okay, cool. Uh, it's Creation World at I-T-S-C-R-E-A-T-I-A World. As always, I'm not going to tell you how to spell world. If you don't know how to spell world, get a damn dictionary. Get your life together. Also, um, if you want to just know more about us and what we do, just go to creationworld.com. Okay, that's where you learn about me and the rest of the team there. You know, everything about us and what we do. All the podcasts we have, all the people on the team, and things about people on the team. What's my favorite ice cream? Go to there and find out. You want to know what my Hogwarts house is? Go there and find out. You want to know what the rest of them, you know, what their favorite drinks are? You go to creationworld.com and find out. So go there. Also, um, you want to catch us live every day during the week, lunchtime, 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central. Yeah, Central. That's what it's called. Man, I've been out of Chicago too long. Um, go to twitch.tv slash creation world for the creation conversation we're bringing you all the latest in that nerd ish news all right every day monday through friday lunchtime check it out also you can catch it later on youtube at youtube.com slash creation world we'll also be live there as well if you want to throw us a little bit more support you can go to our patreon patreon.com slash creation world and you can get some of the extra stuff we do like return to wrestling with myself and the warden matt ritter and multiverse with myself and mara the shark watkins it's worth a dollar it's a dollar get you all that extra stuff each month all of it you get all the all the stuff that we did before that too so like actually if you give a dollar this month you'll get 21 episodes of return to wrestling and like 17 or 18 episodes of multiverse so yeah a dollar gets you there um but yeah every friday night 11 o'clock central midnight if you're on the eastern time zone is smacking it raw our wrestling podcast with the warden matt ritter and vince daddy delgado bring you the latest in that week in wrestling recap everything that happened that week so check it out their facebook group for that is facebook.com slash group slash smacking it raw that's it we'll catch you all next time until then we out thanks a lot appreciate it